we continue with the export data from Power BI series. This time, we are going to filter the data before we export it using Power Automate. Okay, we're going to filter the data in Power Automate, but in future videos, we will use the filters under a report to export filter data. But yeah, let's get started. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going with Power BI create a year week sales table, and then we're going to have Power Automate filtered by previous month. And then on a later video, we're going to send emails to our salespeople saying, hey, that's how you did that previous month. That's your sales previous month, okay? But step by step. In this video, we filter the table. So this is what we're going to do. We go to new flow, schedule, and this will run once a month for you. So previous month sales, repeat once a month, create. You obviously decide when it starts. Probably you want to start the first of each month. So yeah, uh, I'm going to leave it for today. So it runs, <laughs> it might not run. So you, just, you set this up as you like. You even have time zones to set it up. New step. What we're going to do now first is create the filter in Power Automate. So what we need to Power Automate for, to create for us is what is previous month? Okay, so we can then pass that filter into our DAX query to filter the data. So there is a possibility to create variables in Power um, Automate. It's called initialize a variable. We're going to call this variable previous month. And here, how will you create that will actually depend on how your data looks like. So for me, the year month data is year and then the month name, not the month, um, I'm going to show you, not the month number. So if this is a report that we're getting to, it's the Northwind data set, but I modify it so it has data up to 2022. And as you can see, my year month table, it has the year aligned and then it has the month name. So we need to create that in Power Automate. It's not as difficult as you think, but you, I, it took me some time to figure it out, uh, of course. Um, so we are back to Empower Automate, and this is what we're going to do. We're going to split these in two. You could probably use a concatenate function and do it in one, but I found that so difficult to read. So we're going to do it in two steps. The first step is going to be create the year. Um, what year is this current year? And for that, there is a UTC now that I use all the time. And then you use format date time and you use year, year, year. So what this is going to create is going to give us the year in a string form. So then we are going to put a line and then we're going to get a expression that gives us current month. It subtracts one month and then it changes it to name. To month name and the code for that it goes like so the code for that looks like that and then I have year line month na num, name so I'm, I have to put the line and then we need this as a string we cannot have it as a number because in Power BI it's going to be a string too so uh, we're going to test this thing because it's actually easier to test as you create in case something fails, you get, you know, you can fix it right away. Because if you are not able to fix it, you might need to change your strategy. So yeah, it's better to just, and you can see here, yeah, 2022 May. Beautiful. We got it. Okay. Now. The next step is to create our DAX query. So we're going to go next step, and then we're going to go run a query against the data set. And then we're going to, you need to publish the Power BI report, obviously, to Power BI service. Find where you publish it. This is my 2020 
it's actually 2022, <laughs> I changed the name. And then here on the text, I find it easier to actually create the DAX in Power BI. So let's go there and do it. So this is what we're going to create. We're going to create a new table. And what we want to have is filtered by previous month, a year month sales table. So we're going to summarize columns and then we're going to get the calendar month and we need calendar year, year month in there to be able to filter after. So year month, then we're going to add the year week because we need that as we're going to aggregate it by year week and then we're going to have our sales. And I want my sales formatted because otherwise you get like a thousand decimals and all that stuff. It, it just looks bad when you're then emailing it to somebody. And then we're going to have the format without decimals and with a dollar sign and all that stuff. And now what we, if we run these, you will see that it creates a year, month, year, week sales table. Beautiful. But we want to have it for previous month only. So we're going to add a filter to this table. So filter that this table that was created by calendar year week, where is now I'm going to hard code it here. Obviously, this date is going to get generated by Power Automate. But just so I can see the query working, I think it's quite useful to do it like that. Um, yes. So this is year month, not year week, sorry. So this is the table that we get with the year month, year week, and the actual sales. Okay, so now that we have the table we, and the DAX, we copy it and we go back to Power Automate and put it in there. So Power Automate, if you remember how this was done, you get defined, you create a variable, and then evaluate and you execute. So it's like kind of like a variable syntax for the variables in Power BI. So we're going to write define. I wish that they had define and evaluate by default, if that's the syntax that is preferred to use, but small things. So we copy it as it is, and then we have a va write it properly, value eight. And then we need to give a name to this variable. I don't know, whatever is monthly sales and then we copy that and we execute it down here the thing with this is here instead of having 2022 may what we're going to do is we're going to put the previous month thing that will be generated every month so in there save and uh, fingers crossed that this thing works done and here we have our data how cool is this now on the next video we are going to grab these and send it as an email to our salespeople okay and we're going to do it with a little bit with a twist so instead of giving them all the sales right away we're going to give them partial information and the link that says, hey, check all the numbers in Power BI. Because you do want them to go back to Power BI and hopefully find any more insights in your report. Okay, and you want your reports to get used. So we will tease them with data. How about that? See you tomorrow.